Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is coming to conclude the cosmic saga of Peter Quill and his band of not-so-merry men, women, and raccoons. So let's get you caught up with Marvel's Cosmic Crusaders in this edition of Cram. <laughs> In 1988, Peter Quill was kidnapped shortly after his mom's death from cancer. His kidnappers were called the Ravagers, basically a band of space mercenaries led by Yondu, an archer so hardcore he doesn't even need a bow. Quill learns the ways of the space pirate, and when we meet him, he's jamming out on the deserted planet Morog. Go ahead, Peter. He's searching for an orb that he knows is worth millions, but when he space Indiana Joneses his treasure, some dudes show up to take it from him. These dudes are sent by a Kree zealot called Ronan the Accuser, who needs the orb so he can beat up his boss, Thanos. Peter escapes to the Nova Empire's capital world of Xandar, hoping to flip the orb real quick for major cash, none of which will go to his mentor Yondu. Yondu puts a bounty on Peter, which attracts bounty hunters Rocket Raccoon, a cybernetically enhanced woodland creature bristling with weapons and attitude, and Groot, a charming and powerful living plant with a limited vocab. Just like Vin Diesel. The villain Ronan sends Thanos' daughter Gamora to retrieve the orb. Her sister Nebula stays behind, but desperately wants to get into the action to prove she's as good as Thanos' favorite, Gamora. After a fight slash meet cute, Gamora, Rocket, Groot, and Peter get captured and sent to a prison called the Kiln. There, they meet a dude so tough and buff that shirts explode on contact with his skin, apparently. His name is Drax, and he wants to kill Gamora because she hangs out with Ronan, the guy who killed Drax's family, and she's the hated daughter of Thanos. Peter talks him down, though, and Gamora explains that she no longer serves Thanos. With a common enemy and a plan to sell the orb and split the profits, our not-quite heroes bust out of prison like Drax out of a shirt and head to their buyer, the Collector. The Collector lives on a lawless planetoid called Nowhere, which is actually the severed head of a giant cosmic being known as a Celestial. Drax and Rocket get super faded and drunkenly argue, causing Drax to get so pissed he calls Ronan and tells him to come catch these hands. The rest of the group is trying to sell the orb, but when the Collector opens the orb, revealing it's actually a super weapon known as the Power Stone, his abused servant snatches it. But its power is too much for any one person, and she explodes spectacularly. Ronan arrives with his forces, but he personally smacks up Drax super easily. Do you even lift, bro? Ronan captures the Power Stone orb thingy. Gamora gets blowed up real good by Nebula and left to die in open space. Quill calls his old frenemy Yondu, who saves Peter and Gamora. Quill promises to bring Yondu the orb, and the group sets out to get it back from Ronan. Ronan puts the orb in his giant hammer and tells Thanos he quits, and he's not giving two weeks notice. With this power, he's the man, and his first order of business is destroying Xandar. Nebula joins him because she's got more issues than Marvel Comics. Quill, his new friends, and the Ravager help the Nova Corps fight Ronan's forces. Quill and his buddies attack Ronan directly. Gamora and Nebula fight it out like sisters do, but Nebula escapes to be weird another day. Ronan is too tough for our heroes, so Rocket crashes a Ravager ship into Ronan's, causing it to fall to the surface at terminal velocity. Groot weaves his body into a safety net for his buddies, sacrificing himself for the greater good. Quill gets foot loose like his hero Kevin Bacon and destroys Ronan in a funky fresh dance battle, and Rocket explodes Ronan's Power Stone-infused hammer. Quill catches the stone, and the energy slowly rips him apart, but when his friends hold his hands for a ring of power, if you will, they are able to survive and subdue its might. Together, they hurl a blast of energy that ends Ronan for good. Quill gives Yondu the Power Stone as he said he would. Psych! It's just a troll doll! And Yondu understands. Quill gives the real Power Stone to the Nova Corps for safekeeping. When the Ravagers are leaving Xandar, Chief Ravager Kraglin says to Yondu that he's glad they didn't deliver Quill to his father all those years ago. Oh, who could that be? Newly christened as the Guardians of the Galaxy, they have no criminal records and are free to roam the spaceways. Quill also learns that he's half Terran, as in human, and half something ancient and mysterious. As the Guardians jet into hyperspace, we see that Groot is back in a new baby form. Baby versions of things rule! Right, Mandalorian? After the credits, we see that the Collector survived the explosion, and his last two exhibits are a dog in a spacesuit and a talking duck whose name is probably Howard. The year is 2014, and the Guardians are tasked with protecting super batteries owned by an arrogant, hyper-evolved race called the Sovereign. They take the mission so they can get back Nebula, who is captured by the Sovereign in between movies. After they complete their mission, they're blitzed by Sovereign attack drones. Turns out Rocket stole some of the super batteries. The Sovereign are on the verge of capturing or destroying our heroes when their forces are nullified by a strange cosmic power. The Guardians crash on a weird planet and are greeted by their savior. His name is Ego. He's a godlike celestial being, and he is the planet they're on. A living planet. The Sovereign leader, Ayesha, dispatches Yondu and his Ravagers to round up the Guardians. We find out that Yondu and his crew were deemed excommunicado from the Ravager community for kidnapping Peter Quill as a kid. After a thrilling scene, the Ravagers capture Rocket, but when Yondu hesitates to go after Quill next, his crew mutinies, aided by Nebula, who I guess is loyal to nobody. Yondu, Rocket, and Groot are thrown in Ravager jail. Nebula goes after Gamora. Kraglin, a Ravager still loyal to Yondu, pulls a prison break by getting Yondu's backup head fin. With his magic arrow powers back, Yondu, Kraglin, and Rocket escape. 
Back, I guess, on Ego? The Celestial explains that he wandered the galaxy, taking many different forms, experiencing life on other planets. But when he found love on Earth with Quill's mom, something truly special was born. We meet Mantis, Ego's seeming assistant in a space stuff. Ego teaches Quill about the celestial powers he possesses, and Peter finally plays catch with his dad. Aww. Meanwhile, Gamora and Nebula have a fight to the death, but then Nebula, surprisingly, shows her sister Mercy and they call a truce. They also find, like, miles of bones. Something really bad went down here. Ego reveals to Quill that he planted millions of seeds on millions of worlds, but he never had a kid who shared his power. But now that he's reunited with Quill, he can activate them all and turn everywhere into Ego. Drax and Mantis form an odd friendship, and she tells him about Ego's machinations. Ego informs Quill that he killed his mom by giving her cancer because she was a distraction, but it's all good because she gave him Quill. Yay! Quill tries to fight Ego, but the Celestial has had these powers much longer. Ego takes the power he needs from Quill, and all over the universe, planets start transforming into Ego. Gamora and Nebula, Rocket, Yondu, Kraglin, and Baby Groot show up to Ego's planet, and the Guardians take a little trip to Ego's core, which is also in his brain. Yondu finally tells Peter why he raised him instead of giving him to his real father. He didn't want him to end up as one of those skeletons Nebula and Gamora discovered. Then the Sovereign shows up again in their battle drones. Peter and Ego have an Atari fight with their celestial powers, enabling the rest of the Guardians and Mantis to get off planet. Rocket uses the super batteries that started this whole movie to make a bomb, and Baby Groot blows Ego's mind. Literally. Ego, the not-so-living planet, vaporizes, leaving Peter in the vacuum of space with no more superpowers, but his actual dad, Yondu, saves him in a brave sacrifice. Gamora and Nebula are cool now, but Nebula bounces to go hunt Thanos. At Yondu's funeral, other Ravager groups show up and shoot off traditional Ravager fireworks, showing that in death, Yondu got his honor back. And finally, Gamora and Peter stop their Ross and Rachel will-they-won't-they -they thing. Kraglin tries to become the new Yondu, Sylvester Stallone reunites with some guardians that look so comic book accurate, and Aisha creates a perfect super being called Adam that she's gonna unleash on the Guardians soon. In Infinity War, Gamora's dad Thanos conquers Xandar and takes the Power Stone from the Nova Corps. Thanos slaughters many of the Asgardians left after the events of Thor Ragnarok, smacks up the Hulk, kills Loki, blows up the Asgardian ship, and jettisons Thor into outer space. The Guardians respond to the Asgardian SOS and show up in time to save Thor, although he probably wouldn't see it that way. Thor takes control, much to Peter's chagrin, advising that one group of Guardians need to go to nowhere to prevent Thanos from obtaining the Reality Stone. Boy, this Collector guy loves stones. While the others go to Nivedalir and get an axe powerful enough to kill Thanos. Teen Groot uses his arm to make the handle. So cool! When Quill, Gamora, Drax, and Mantis arrive at Nowhere, they discover that Thanos already possesses the Reality Stone. His powers leave the Guardians powerless, and Thanos leaves with Gamora. He tortures Nebula to get the location of the Soul Stone out of Gamora. He takes her to get the Soul Stone, and when he discovers he must sacrifice something he truly loves in order to get the stone, Gamora thinks she's safe because, quote, you love nothing. But she's dead wrong. Nebula breaks out of captivity and calls the Guardians to meet her on Titan, the long-lost home of Thanos. Tony Stark, Spider-Man, and Doctor Strange end up there as well, after dispatching one of Thanos' fiercest soldiers, the Ebony Maw. Strange uses the Time Stone to see the one way out of billions that the Avengers and Guardians can defeat Thanos. Quill and the gang make a plan to nerf Thanos and jack his gauntlet, but Peter sorta messes that up big time. Doctor Strange gives up the Time Stone in exchange for Stark's life. The Guardians fight valiantly, along with the Wakandans and Avengers, but in the end, Thanos snaps Quill, Drax, Mantis and Groot into dust. Flash forward to the year 2018, half the universe is dust. Nebula and Tony Stark are stranded in space, light years from home. Captain Marvel rescues them, bringing them back to Earth. The Avengers receive word from Rocket that the energy signature from the stones was used recently. They bum rush Thanos in his cabin and defeat the weary Titan. He informs them that he used the stones to destroy them, so the Avengers can't use them to set things right. Thor lops off Thanos' head in anger, and it seems all's lost. Until five years later, a lucky rat frees Scott Lang from the quantum realm. He explains that a time machine is possible and necessary Necessary, so Rocket and Banner, now a smart Hulk, build a time machine that doesn't quite work. Rocket goes to New Asgard to collect a clearly depressed Thor. The reunited Avengers hatch a time heist to gather the stones from specific moments in the MCU and make their own Infinity Gauntlet. Thor and Rocket draw the short straw, so have to travel back to Thor the Dark World to get the Reality Stone out of Jane Foster and get his old hammer back. Nebula and James Rhodes go to Guardians Volume 1 to stop Quill from stealing the Power Stone. They almost get away with it, but right as they're about to timely poem, Nebula's cybernetic implants go nutso because her 2014 self and she are on the same neural network. Through this, Thanos is able to access her memories of him defeating the Avengers and using the gauntlet. He sends the 2014, let's call her Evil Nebula for short, back to the future to sabotage the Avengers. 
Rocket, Stark, and Banner build their bootleg Infinity Gauntlet, and the Hulk snaps things back to the way they were. But Evil Nebula uses the Time Machine to bring 2014 Thanos and his minions, including a 2014 version of Gamora who never met Peter Quill, to the present. Nebula knows Gamora is good and liberates her from Thanos, but Evil 2014 Nebula is stuck in her ways, so present day Nebula has to literally destroy her former self. The Avengers and Guardians fight off Thanos and save the universe, but when Quill tries to reunite with the 2014 version of Gamora, she knees him in the Infinity Stones and escapes. Thor decides he needs a break from Earth and decides to join the Guardians, dubbing them the Asgardians of the Galaxy. In Thor Love and Thunder, we see the Guardians on an adventure to save a planet from bird people with really fragile architecture. It's pretty clear that the Guardians are kind of done with Thor's act, and when he says he must respond to a distress call from his old warrior girlfriend Sif, the Guardians are quick to say happy trails to the blonde blowhard. In the Guardians Christmas special, it's revealed that the Guardians are now the proud owners of Nowhere. They're just like me! They also have a new member, Cosmo the Telekinetic Space Dog. Peter is despondent over the loss of Gamora, so his crew try to come up with the perfect present to cheer him up. Kraglin suggests that when Peter was a kid, Yondu did something to ruin Christmas for him. Drax and Mantis head to Earth, because they figure the thing Quill would want most is to meet his hero, Kevin Bacon. They break into Bacon's house and chase him around, and then they have a run-in with the cops. Pretty normal Christmas. Quill's mortified that his buddies kidnapped a dude, but when Kraglin tells Bacon about how much his heroism inspired Peter, all is forgiven. At the after party, Quill reveals that Yondu came around about the dopeness of Christmas and gifted Peter the twin blasters he uses to this day. Mantis tells Peter that Ego the Living Planet was also her dad, and that makes them brother and sister. Oh, that's the greatest present Peter could have asked for. So now, my friends, you are prepared to watch The Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Who will survive? Will Peter and Gamora be reunited, or is their love gone for good? Heck, maybe he's in a nebula now. That'd be weird. Either way, find out the answer to these and many more questions when you see Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 on May 5th, only in theaters.